While humans are far from discussing the economy with their beloved pets, that doesn't mean they can't have meaningful conversations with them. Every pet parent has dreamed of the day that they'll be able to talk to their dog, have them respond back, and all that. But who's to say you haven't already been communicating with your pooch? Sure, you can't maintain an actual conversation with them like with humans, but in their own canine way, they've been communicating with you. And remember, not all communication has to be verbal. Today, we're taking a look at 10 science-backed ways you can talk to your dog. So let's get started. Number 10, dog-directed speech versus infant-directed speech. You might have noticed the pitch of your voice changes when talking to different age groups. You wouldn't be talking in a high-pitched voice with your boss, and you wouldn't be assertive when talking to a toddler. The way we subconsciously change the pitch of our voice when talking to different age groups is referred to as infant-directed speech. Scientists have determined that this method of speech is actually quite necessary to be able to form a strong bond with a toddler. Now, scientists have conducted research that shows that talking to a puppy in the same high-pitched way would form a bond with them, too. This is known as dog-directed speech. Does dog-directed speech actually work? According to studies that have been conducted, pet parents who spoke to their pets using dog-directed speech were more likely to get a favorable response back from them. The speech works on the principle that dogs will respond or be willing to when you speak to them calmly and lovingly. Number 9. Understanding Your Pet's Vocabulary The cat goes meow, the cow goes moo, but the dog can go roof, bow wow, woof, and a whole lot more. Science has shown that given canines' close relationship with humans well over 80,000 years of it, they've developed a more vast vocabulary when communicating with humans. Yes, their language is still foreign to us and their vocabulary is by no means exhaustive. However, scientists are quite hopeful that humans can and will be able to communicate a lot more effortlessly with pets in the upcoming years. You might have noticed that some pet parents are able to communicate with their dogs a lot more easily than others. Why is that so? Because they're able to understand their dog's vocabulary. Not necessarily understand the meaning behind wolf, but more likely to grasp the possible meaning of it given the situation. Number 8. Body Language You can tell a lot from a dog from its body language. In fact, up until recently, that's all we had to communicate with our dogs. For example, you know, a dog with its paw raised wants your attention. One sitting on all fours is waiting for you to feed it, and one with all its teeth out is probably in a bad mood. Communication via body language is not only easy to comprehend, it's also easy to reply with. For example, you can stand tall to be assertive, maintain eye contact for adoration, and of course, pet your pooch for a job well done. However, based on how easy it is for pets to understand body language, pet parents have an added responsibility to not be in a bad mood all the time. Your pet will pick up on how often you get angry and will probably hide from you because of all that negativity. Animals are great at picking up signals or are more likely to be conditioned to circumstances with the repeated signals. In this case, even one you're not necessarily directing towards your pet. Number 7. Conditioned Behavior Perhaps one of the first experiments to have ever been conducted to establish communication with pets was in the way in which we condition them towards a particular act. This experiment would usually consist of a signal followed by an act. For example, ringing a bell each time, you'd fill up their bowl with food. Conditioning your pet toward a particular act might seem easy, but it takes a while before they're able to subconsciously associate the signal with the act. But once they're able to associate the two, it's all smooth sailing. This isn't limited to conditioning them to eat their meals. It could also be when it's time to go outside, time for bed, and so forth. Number 6. Picking up on signs your pet is giving so far, we've talked about signs you could give your pet to help them communicate with you. But what about the signs they're already giving you? Are there any signs? Well, sure there are. Your pet has been giving you signs, and you've picked up on them too. For example, some pets would raise their paws at the television screen to get you to change the channel. This act isn't common behavior amongst all pets, but it's something some of them do. While you might not have been able to understand it the first time around, you eventually picked up on it. In a way, your pet has been conditioning you. 
It might be frustrating for you to not be able to communicate effectively with your pet, but it's probably a lot more frustrating for them given how they rely on you for sustenance and cuddles. Number 5. Eye contact is key. They say in order to get anyone's attention, you need to be able to make eye contact with them. In this case, you need to establish eye contact with your pet every time you're trying to talk to them and get their attention. You can't just yell out a command like sit and not be looking directly at your puppy. While one might argue that pets have learned their names over time, that doesn't mean they're apt enough to learn other words and commands without you directly looking at them. Eye contact is also necessary when you're trying to show your pet adoration. Your pet tends to respond to you when they feel like you're their safe space. Isn't it the same way for humans too? Number 4. Keep it short and simple. When you want your pet to give you its paw, you'll say paw while raising your hand out, as opposed to saying, would you please give me your paw? Dogs are more likely to respond to you when you keep it short and simple. They won't be able to pick up long sentences. Instead of trying to hold conversations with your pet, you need to keep it straight to the point. Number 3. Positive Reinforcement No, you don't need to bribe your pet every time you want them to do something, but it sure helps. Dogs are a lot more likely to pick up on commands where they feel like a reward is attached. For example, if you pet your puppy every time it comes down the stairs when you call out its name, it'll be a lot more eager to come down. Number 2. Tail Language What do you do when you can't articulate the words you're trying to say? You can use signs to represent them instead. Now, what if you're a dog without fingers and unaware of human signs? You use tail signs instead. Tail language has been well researched and documented. We now know that an erect tail is a greeting, a low tail shows sadness, and a wagging tail means your pet is in a great mood. Again, tail language is sometimes unique to individual dogs. It's your job as a pet parent to pick up on these signs and understand your pet better. Number 1. The Situation What separates a pet owner from a pet parent? Quite literally, an owner would look at their dog as something they possess, but a parent would look at their dog as if it were an extension of themselves. Pet parents need to be able to read the situation and environment their pet is in and respond to them. Maybe there's a trigger in the environment your pet is in and they're trying to get your attention. Maybe they're happy with something in their surroundings. An effective way to communicate with your puppy is to be able to scan their surroundings and read their body language accordingly. All right, how do you communicate with your puppy? Let us know in the comments down below and be sure to like this video, subscribe for more, and check out some of the other videos for more pet-related content. We'll see you in the next one.